Thanks, Ariella. Everybody, my name is Alex Barthet. I am a board-certified construction lawyer here in Florida. Uh, and today, we're going to answer the question, how do I get paid on a public project if there is no bond? So let's get started. Uh, so today, we're going to talk about um, what the problem is first. We need to identify the problem to come up with a solution. Um, we're going to talk about what public projects need bonds. Why is it different from a private project? What, why, is it, why does this problem exist on public jobs and not necessarily private jobs? And then we get to the crux of the matter, which is how do I get paid if the project isn't bonded? So what is the problem? Um, well, let's imagine that you're a subcontractor, a sub-subcontractor, or a supplier, uh, and you're working on a public job. The contract you sign has a pay when paid provision, or you're a little concerned about the credit worthiness of your customer, meaning you probably did the job because you thought that if you didn't get paid by your customer, you would be able to have lien rights or on a public job, a claim against a payment bond. So you just assume that if the job is public, that you're gonna have rights against that payment bond because you know that you don't have lien rights on a public job. So you move forward with the job, you deliver your materials, you do your work, and then you learn that there is no bond. Um, unfortunately, you learn this too late because you've already done the work and you're already owed the money. So the question is, now what? So that is the problem we are gonna try to solve, uh, both if you're in the middle of the situation, when it's too late, um, and you need to solve the problem. But at the same time, I'll give you some good information that you can use to try to avoid the problem from happening in the first place. So the first thing you need to understand is what jobs need uh, bonds, what public jobs need bonds. So in Florida, if the job is between a dollar and $200,000, the government, the municipality, the school board, they don't need to get a bond. So on smaller jobs, you should be uh, aware that the likelihood that a bond exists is low. Now between 200,000 and 400,000, it is optional for the municipality to get a bond. So it's at their discretion on whether or not they want to get it. Any job between a contractor and a public agency uh, with the, in the state of Florida, greater than $400,000, has to have a bond. So the risk here are jobs that are smaller in nature, which are typically less than $400,000, where you run the risk that you just assume that the job is bonded only to find out that it isn't. Now, if you do work on federal jobs, the threshold is lower, it's $100,000. So any job on a federal project, which is governed by the Miller Act, um, has a requirement to be bonded over $100,000. So why is it different on a public job than a private job? As you probably know, on a, on a private job, you're able to record a lien. So if you don't get paid by your customer and you comply with all of the notice requirements that the lien law imposes upon you, you have recourse against the property. You can record a lien and then you can sell that property at a public auction and any equity will be used to pay you and the amount of money that you're owed. So on a public job, you have this potential fallback position if you don't get paid. Unfortunately, on uh, that's on private jobs. On public jobs, you don't have that ability. On a public job, if you aren't paid and there is no bond, you have no lien rights. So where does that leave you? The crux of your recovery is gonna be based on your customer and your contract. And possibly that is your only recovery. So if you have concerns about your customer's ability to pay you, um, or you have concerns about your contract, you need to be uh, worried before you start the job. So let's talk about the things you can do before you start the job. So one, verify that the job is in fact bonded if that is one of the reasons or a primary reason why you're willing to do work on this job or deliver materials to this job. 
So how do you get a copy of the bond? So there's a couple of ways. Uh, number one, you can ask the contractor. Now, if you're a sub-sub on a job, on a Florida public job, you have the sub above you and then the GC above them. So you're going to have to ask the GC, which may not be your customer. Um, but the general contractor, the party, uh, the contractor that has the contract with the municipal agency, that's the one that's going to be getting the bond if they have to get one. So you can ask them for it. Um, there's a way in the statute to request a copy of the bond once you start working. Again, this is before you start your, your work. So you can pick up the phone and you can call the contractor. You can also submit a request to the public agency called a Freedom of Information Act request, also known as a FOIA request. Uh, any municipal agency that has a copy of the bond is obligated to give it to you um, within a reasonable amount of time if you make a Freedom of Information Act request. Every county uh, and school board is a little different, but many of them just require an email or they have a website. Um, you can call them. They may even just give it to you uh, over the phone. They'll send you an email. You can go to their office, and if the bond has been issued and they have it, they'll give, they have to give you a copy. You can also check the public records. A copy of the bond is supposed to be recorded in the public records where the project is located. So if you Google public records and then the name of the county, so if you said public records Broward County, public records Duval County, and you put that into Google, you will get the public records search page for that county. Once you're there, you can do a search by the contractor's name or the surety's name, and if it's been if the bond has been recorded and if it's been indexed properly by the clerk, it should show up as, as a, uh, an item on the list. But again, if you're doing this before the job has started or right when the job has started, um, that you know it takes some time for the documents to appear in the public records, anywhere between three days and two weeks. So keep that in mind. Of all of the ways to get a copy of the bond, I would tell you that getting in touch with the municipal agency directly to request a bond is probably the fastest and easiest way to do that. So other things you need to consider. Um, you should avoid pay when paid provisions in your contract if you can. The reason that's important is because imagine a scenario in which you have no rights against uh, a bond, you can't lien the job, you've agreed in your contract that your only recourse is payment from your customer so long as your customer has been paid, and what if they haven't been paid? What if there's a dispute between the owner and the contractor and the owner doesn't want to pay anymore? What if there's a dispute between the contractor and the subcontractor and you're a sub-subcontractor and the sub hasn't been paid? Um, that will severely limit your rights to get paid. So if you are doing work on a public job that isn't bonded, signing a contract that has a pay when paid provision is very risky. Other things you can do, you can include a stop work provision in your contract. What does that mean? That means that in your contract, uh, if you have a, uh, a written agreement, which ideally you should, it would have a provision in it that says that to the extent you are not paid uh, timely uh, for your draws, then you have the right to slow or stop work. Um, so it doesn't guarantee that you get paid, but at least it stops the bleeding so you don't have to keep working as uh, the project continues and you're still not getting paid. You need to limit your credit risk. So if you have a, a project and you, you're going to deliver $150,000 worth of materials on this job that has no bond, then you may decide that you're not going to ship any materials beyond, you know, whatever you decide. Maybe it's $25,000. So once you hit $25,000, uh, if they haven't paid you, they're not getting any more materials. So those are the decisions you need to make in advance because once you deliver the materials and they're incorporated or you do the work and it's been accepted and then you find out you have a problem getting paid, it's in many instances too late. Um, so 
if you can limit the amount of materials and, and work that you deliver and incorporate into the project before it becomes a really big number, you're better off. Now, if you have delivered the materials or incorporated the, uh, your services into the job, and now you've learned that you have no bond rights, um, your recourse is effectively twofold. One, you can sue the contractor, whoever your customer is, I should say, for breach of the contract. Um, again, ideally, there's not a pay when paid provision in your contract, because uh, if there is and it's a valid provision, that's going to limit your ability to recover. Um, so that's number one. You can sue your customer for breach of contract uh, for non-payment. You did the work. You haven't been paid. You can file a lawsuit. Now, the other claim you may be able to make is against the next party up uh, in the chain. So if you are, uh, uh, but that would exclude the municipal government. So if you're a sub subcontractor and you haven't been paid, you can sue your customer, which is the subcontractor, but you may be able to also sue the prime contractor for uh, on a theory that's called unjust enrichment, which is you've delivered materials to the project, they've been paid by the, uh, the municipal agency, but they haven't paid uh, you, and therefore they have been unjustly enriched. And as a result, they should pay you directly, skipping over your customer. That's the theory of unjust enrichment, that someone has received a benefit from your work and your materials, and they should have to pay for that. Um, the, the risk uh, in that claim is that sometimes the contractor says, while I did get paid some or maybe even all of the money from the uh, municipality, I have a claim against my subcontractor. Uh, he thinks he's owed $200,000, but I had to hire somebody else to do the work. He did defective work. Um, she was late on the job. And therefore, while I was paid by the municipal government, I actually don't owe them the money. And therefore, I haven't been unjustly enriched. That is a defense that they may assert. Those are all very factual issues that would have to be figured out to determine who's right and who's wrong.